Hello, I'm Andrew Hot from Battlefront, and today I'd like to talk to you about one of my favorite companies in the new American D-Day books, which are the Assault Companies. Now, the Assault Companies are infantry companies. They use basically a lot and a lot of infantry to get the job done. There are two different types. There's the Veteran, Big Red One, and the 29th Infantry Division. The major differences between the two are one is aggressive, so it's hit on a 3+. They also have the Blood and Guts ability, which makes them rally on a 3+. plus. Where the other one has Careful, so they are actually hit on a 4+, plus, but they don't have Blood and Guts. Instead, they have Yankee Ingenuity, which gives them a 3+, plus Tactics. But the Veteran guys will come out at a more expensive price at 12 points a unit, and the Train guys come out to 9 points a unit. So there's quite a bit of point difference when you start adding them up. Now, my favorite company out of the two is the 29th Infantry Division. They are not as flash as the veteran guys with their 4 plus to hit, but you do get the numbers, which is one of the biggest things I think this company gives you. When you look over at the force diagram, you'll see that you can bring six units of the boat sections and four units of the boat support sections. So what this means, oh, you could also bring a cannon platoon of course to the HQ. This means that this is a pretty large company. You can fill a lot of points up with this. And you can just kind of overwhelm the board with just the sheer numbers of what you can bring. And on top of that, you can actually bring a smaller version of this and bring a lot of support. But before I go into that, let's talk about what this army wants to do and how you can best tactically put it together. Now, this army really wants to fight with numbers. So you really want a lot of your core troops. And when I say core, I mean basically what that formation is all about. Like a core troop for your Sherman tank company will be Shermans, because that's the core of your troop. You can have 76s and stuff like that add to your 75 Shermans, but the core of that unit is Shermans. And you kind of want to make sure that you support the core with as many units as you can kind of fit in there to make it both do what you need to do and also get the support that they need to go and do what they need to do. So in this particular case, your core is your assault boat sections. For mine, actually, I'm going to bring five. I think five units gives me a lot more options, and it's a lot of troops that you can put on the ground. So right now, I'm going to put five of them in my list, and I'm going to put in a couple of the boat support sections. So you get a lot of options with the support sections. You either can do the um, boat support, support sections, which is one single HMG, a mortar, and four grand teams, or you can have one HMG platoon, one mortar platoon, one... Oh, two, up to two end of tank platoons. So you can kind of mix and match as you see fit. For me, I'm going to bring two of them. I'm going to replace the, the both of the 57 millimeters with support boat sections. So I won't have any anti tank guns that way. But I will have the two HMGs, the mortar, and the grand. So I'm going to have a lot of like little mini artillery templates because I'm going to have the five assault boat sections, which have five grand teams, two bazookas, one mortar, and one flamethrower. And I'm going to have two of the support sections. So each of those units will have a, their own 81 uh, millimeter mortar. So I'll be able to drop an artillery bombardment with all of them if I need to. Most likely I won't be able to shoot them all at once because different things will be on the table. Some things will be in reserve and so on and so forth. But that is a lot of kind of just artillery to bring to bear on your opponent. Now with one gun it's going to be more difficult to hit than if you have a proper three gun battery. But... The more templates you lay down on something, the more chances you have to pin things, and you eventually will start whittling things down and killing things, especially if you're rearranging in. Now, all those units together equal 57 points. So I'm going to have to add some more stuff to kind of beef up the, the list points. And I think I want an HMG platoon. I want something that I can dig in on the objective with some of these support sections just to really stop any infantry from taking my objectives well my five then assault boat sections can go out hunting so they can go either to take my opponent's objective or they can be in reserve and come on and yeah it just gives me it frees them up to do what they need to do i'll add the um, hmgs for three points so that gives me exactly 60 points so for 60 points i will have eight platoons of infantry in my hq that's a huge company so that's just a lot of stuff for me to put down on the table, and it's going to be a lot of stuff my opponents are going to have to deal with. Now for my last 40 points, I kind of want to cover some of the deficits of this army. So right now I have a lot of infantry, so I can assault infantry, I can shoot infantry, I can do that quite well. I have a lot of bazookas, so I'm pretty good at taking out like light armor, half-tracks, and that kind of stuff. And I can also kind of scare some of the medium tanks if I get close. 
So it's a pretty good kind of solid base, well-rounded. But the one thing I'm missing is something that can take out heavy things and from afar. So like if there's a lot of tanks that have machine guns, it will just mow my infantry down, that sort of thing. I also want to be able to take on like a panther or just a, a strong panzer IV unit. So I think I'm going to put in some M10s. Now in this book, you can bring an M10 company. And I think I'm going to do a little mini M10 company as a support to my tanks, I'm going to say to my infantry. So I'm going to go ahead and grab two full strength platoons of M10s and their HQ. So each platoon of M10, flip to the page here, are 16 points each. And for 16 points, you get four M10s. They don't have much for armor, but they're careful. So if you're good at putting them in good locations, like you throw them into the woods so they get concealment, so they're going to be quite hard for your opponents to remove. But on top of that, they have AT-12, which is quite good. They don't have HE, but you don't really need them to take care of your infantry, your opponent's infantry, because that's what your troops are there for, and all those mortars. And then I'll also put in, of course, their HQ, which is two M20 scout cards, for just two points. Now, with this, altogether, that's only 34 points. So I actually have six more points left over to do something else with. And I think, actually, I want to focus on artillery here. Now, I have some great anti-tank, and I have some good infantry, but I need something that can definitely pin my targets. So, my infantry with the one gun on batteries are going to be a little hit and miss. In train and stuff, it's just going to be hard for me to range in and do what I need to do. So, I think a six-gun battery or mortars will be perfect. So, let's look at 44 and see how many points those are. Actually, six-gun is exactly six points. That's actually a perfect fit for my list. So, six mortars... I'll have eight M10s, their HQ, and nine unit strength assault company, if you count the company commander's one, which is quite a bit of stuff. That's going to be a lot of stuff for my opponents to have to take care of. And the list is actually quite large. So with 60 points being my infantry and all my tanks being, and my mortars being 40 points, it makes my 60-40 um, split for reserves quite easy. Because I can just put all my infantry on the table and then bring in the M10s and the mortars when I need them. Having the intents come in from reserve allows them to um, use the mobility to great effect and also kind of scares the opponent from thinking about committing too many tanks too quickly because your intents can show up out of nowhere and just blow them away. So it's a really good deterrent for that. The other thing that's quite nice with this list is I will have a lot of bazookas. Because each of my tunes will have two, so that's ten bazookas just in total. On a beach landing mission, this is quite good, because the only units that will actually not redeploy will be my M10s and the M20s. So if I focus a lot on my infantry right away and bring on my M10s to take on any tanks or any kind of reserves that my opponent has, I'm going to have quite a bit that they have to chew through before I start losing things that actually can't be replaced. So I do quite like that kind of strong infantry solid aspect to the list. Now, if I'm defending, throwing in one boat section and one of the regular combat platoons for the assault boat group, so support and assault sections on an objective, gives you a huge defensive boost. You'll have an HMG, you'll have two different mortars that can drop two different templates, and you'll have just a bunch of rifle teams, nine rifle teams, and two bazookas. So it'll be kind of hard for tanks to assault, and just a lot of bodies there for infantry to have to take care of. And the fact that they're two different units means that some of them might unpin, and some might not. So if you have two of them there, the chances of you getting at least one unit that unpins and fires back at full rate of fire is quite high. And to cover an objective, then that's only 14 points. So that's only 28 points of your full 100-point list that you need to actually put on the table to kind of just hold those two major objectives. And that means you have just a ton of points to play around with. If you need M10s in ambush right away, boom, you can put them there. You can throw your mortars on the table if you need to at that point. You can just do a lot of stuff. So in defense, this list is going to be quite good. On the offense, this list is going to want to really focus itself and just go for one objective. All your combat platoons and both sections just send them directly towards an objective. Use your HMGs and your mortars to soften the objective and pin any infantry or gun team assets that might try to knock you guys down on the way in. Use your M10s to keep tanks off, off you and use the combat platoons and the boat sections just to overwhelm an objective. Don't give them chances to kind of just piecemeal you one unit at a time by going at both objectives so they can just kind of spread the fire. And then everything on that objective has to focus on your whole entire army instead of just half your army. And then the other objective, everything protecting that, will have to get up and move towards the 
the objective you're attacking to reinforce it, which then in turn you'll use your HMGs and your mortars to kind of pin them down and blast them away as you move your troops forward. If your opponents are playing tanks, most likely they'll be on an aggressive path anyway, so you'll be on the defensive footing in something like a dust up or a free for all. And if that's the case, then like I said, you just dig in those four units on the objectives and they're going to be really hard for them to take. You use the rest of your platoons to start harassing their tanks and just try to take out as many as you can, whittle them down to the point where they cannot mount a, an efficient attack on your objectives, and then switch to the aggressor and just move straight towards an objective with everything that's not holding objective, perhaps even just leaving your boat support sections on the objectives and just going for it. But I really like the flexibility of this list. It's both good at attack and it's good at defense. Um, its major weakness is it doesn't have any dedicated AA, so if your opponent has good air power, then um, you're going to have some issues there. Um, and if your opponent has a lot of small tanks, so like Stewart's, a Stewart company is not what this army wants to see. It wants to see like a nice medium tank company or a, see a Panther company, and hopefully the M10s will be enough to take them out while your infantry get into position. But if there are any lots of little tanks, that's I think where you can get the most trouble. You just have to hope the infantry dug in become too much of an obstacle for them to come over and destroy. Just don't attack into a, a giant unit of Stuarts or something. Just hold your M10s back, try to pin off, um, pick off as many as you can, and hopefully you'll be able to break through once the Stuarts start breaking off the table. Anyways, this has kind of been a quick little army review of the 29th Infantry Division. I hope um, this helps you in, in some ways, and I will catch you in my next um, army list. Cheers.